Warning. This feature contains themes that some viewers may find offensive. If you are affected by any of the content in this video, please contact literally anyone but me. Hey, 42 here. Before I begin, I'd like to say that this video will be a bit different to normal because it will contain a lot of opinion. But I feel so passionately about this topic that it needs to be addressed. If you're used to my usual style of fact-based videos and you aren't comfortable with hearing opinions that you may not agree with, then I kindly ask that you give this one a miss. So, if you've watched the news, read the papers, or used any kind of social media within the last few years, you will have noticed an unsavoury trend that has been increasing with exponential virality. Everyone is getting offended by everything. Whether you have been witness to it or not, there is an ever-growing number of ultra-politically correct far-left militants that are hell-bent on campaigning for a cause for people whom they've never even met and who never asked them to campaign for them in the first place. And no, this isn't about politics. It's far more serious than that. This is about maintaining our freedoms and rights as a human race. And no, Sadly, I'm not exaggerating. If you're not quite sure what the hell I'm going on about, let me tell you about a fairly recent case that just goes to prove my point about how deadly political correctness can be. In November 2009, a psychologist working in the US Army, Nidal Malik Hassan, opened fire on the other troops in the base while shouting, God is great, in Arabic. 13 people were killed. It was soon discovered that the Pentagon knew all about Hassan's radical ideologies way before this act of terrorism. They were aware of a whole bunch of emails he had been sending to other radical Muslims. Even his own colleagues at the army base had expressed their discomfort about him to others, saying that he was, quote unquote, a ticking time bomb. So how on Earth, could the US government and the senior army management simply allow this horrific mass murder to take place? Well, because the powers that be within the US army were too afraid of being accused of racially profiling someone to take any action against him. And so, because of the unyielding pressure of political correctness in the modern age, 13 people, tragically, had to die. The effects of the overoffended can be seen strongly in comedy. The 60s, 70s and 80s were full of original, geniusly witty TV comedies that have yet to be bettered. Such as Monty Python, Faulty Towers, Blackadder, Yes Minister and a handful of others which I'm sure you all have fond memories of, but there are too many to name here. But each and every one of these shows delved into the realm of what overly sensitive people today might wrongly call sexist, homophobic or racist. One notable example is what many people consider to be the greatest 30 minutes of TV comedy ever written and performed, the Faulty Towers episode, The Germans. The whole 30 minutes is stuffed full of non-PC jokes that wouldn't dare to be part of any contemporary TV sitcom. One particular scene shows a resident of Faulty Towers, Major Gowan, using racial slurs against West Indians and Germans. Sadly, due to the increasingly sensitive nature of some TV viewers today, this scene is now completely cut by the BBC from the episode whenever they air it on TV. But what most people fail to see, of course, is that the writers John Cleese and Connie Booth are by no means supporting such racial slurs. They are, in fact, doing the opposite. They are making a joke out of the Majors, a completely fictional character, ignorance and prejudice towards other cultures and races. And that is just totally fine. Because racism is wrong, and we should make fun of those who practice it. So how is it that I can so confidently say that such TV moments were categorically not racist? Well, for one simple reason. It is comedy. Comedy should have no bounds. When horrendous, unthinkable things happen such as war, the Holocaust, slavery, disease and oppression, it is human nature to want to make things better. Unless, of course, you are the one causing suffering. 
And we can often make good of any bad situation by simply having a laugh. During the war and the Great Depression, comedy sitcoms and talk shows were broadcast on radio stations all day long, every day. Such shows would often attract audiences of 30 million plus listeners. 30 million people wanted to listen to comedy in the middle of a war. Because when the chips are down and all seems lost, it's the small things that really matter. It might just be that moment of laughter one gets from a comedy sketch on the radio. It might trivialise the seemingly insurmountable issues you are facing by poking fun at them and so making them seem just a little bit less horrible and slightly more tolerable. Of course, being intentionally prejudiced towards a specific group of people is a horrible thing, but when we are forced to conform to extreme political correctness, it only strips away our freedom of speech and our ability to express ourselves. Today's stand-up comedians have fallen victim to the ever-tightening PC noose around their creative necks. More so than ever, comedians are having to censor their own material, making it less offensive and more politically correct, just to appease what many journalists are calling the snowflake generation. Certain British comedians such as Ricky Gervais, Jimmy Carr and Frankie Boyle have been reprimanded repeatedly by British television regulators Ofcom after making offensive jokes on television because the regulators have simply been forced to do so after numerous complaints by the over-offended TV viewers who feel that they are entitled to restrict a comedian's freedom of speech. And even more frighteningly, the issue is intensified by the fact that the snowflake generation are using social media en masse, such as Twitter, to publicly ridicule and beat down any comedian who uses anti-PC language in their comedy. And so many comedians are too afraid to write the material that they truly want to. They are scared of what the public reaction may be if their content isn't entirely family friendly. And how drastically sad is that? But the slightly ironic thing is that the snowflake crowd are in many ways doing the complete opposite of what they seek to achieve. Instead of censoring offensive comedy, some comedians are now purposely being as offensive as possible with their material in a backlash to the easily offended populace as a way to fight back against liberal oppression and say, that it's okay to be a little offensive from time to time. Because we are humans, we are not perfect, and sometimes joining in on a joke, even if it's at one's own expense, can be a most joyous thing. But sadly, there is also a dark side to comedians pushing their offensive humour as far as it can go, because it tends to skew more towards simple-minded toilet humour, slapstick and an overwhelming amount of forced bad language and sex jokes. This all takes the place of what previously could have been well thought out witty humour that uses offence as a natural and organic part of the joke, instead of being forced into the material in an unnatural, belligerent and obviously artificial fashion. Alas, sadly, no matter how hard comedians attempt to fight back against the snowflakes, the reality is that this crowd does wield power because of advertisers. Today, so many people are so quick to lodge complaints against television broadcasters and other companies that TV executives are now too afraid to invest money into original writing talent just because it may be too edgy or offensive for certain demographics of their viewership. And the problem is made even worse as TV broadcasters are held at the mercy of their advertisers. Today, advertisers recognise the power of the snowflake crowd and their ability to rant and rave on social media about their brand if they are seen as being slightly offensive or prejudiced. And so, advertisers will point-blank refuse to advertise on shows that could be construed as offensive by pretty much anyone. And if the advertising money isn't there, then a show will never be broadcast or made. 
no matter how good it could be. We've all seen this exact same issue here on YouTube in recent years. To protect advertisers and their all-important revenue streams, YouTube has introduced new measures to aggressively censor any content creator that produces slightly edgy content by stripping away their advertising revenue, their bread and butter. I make a lot of videos about history, and war is a prominent and natural feature of our history, which should be openly talked about so we can learn from our mistakes. Not to mention, it's really interesting. But any video that so much mentions the word war has been entirely stripped of advertisements, at least in my case. Because God forbid someone out there is offended by a recount of accurate historical events. But we can't blame YouTube, or even the advertisers, for this mass censorship. It really isn't their fault. They are just responding to what the public wants, to protect their own revenue, and any business would do that. It is the easily offended, the complainers, those that are quick to reprimand people who seek to speak freely and unimpeded, that are the ones truly responsible. They are the rotten core. The true cause of what has to inevitably be a rapid decline in creativity. But is it really that wrong to be offended? No, of course it's not. Everyone gets offended from time to time. It is natural, it is human nature to take a dislike to comments or actions that cause us upset. The public have always taken offence. That's not new. What is new and what is the true problem today? is people's feeling of entitlement that they believe is given to them by being offended. Because many millennials, especially in the West, have grown up in a time free of violent war, free of oppression and poverty, they have never known what it's like to not have everything, to not get what they want. This has instilled some people with a feeling of gross entitlement, a feeling that them being offended actually mean something? Well, let me tell you straight. Being offended doesn't mean anything. It's a natural human response, and it's okay to be offended or even disgusted at other people's actions, but it absolutely does not give you the right to control how others behave and talk. If someone calls you stupid, you rightly should be offended. But that doesn't mean you can start a campaign to prevent people from using the word stupid. That would be stupid. And it's also a little something we like to call oppression. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about every young person out there. Far from it. I'm simply talking about a small, small minority, but as is often the case in life, it's the few that spoil it for the many. But why is being so openly offended and making sure that everyone possible knows how utterly offended you are such a bad thing? Well, there is a fundamental problem with being offended and making a big deal of it. Offence is subjective. What each of us is offended by is vastly different from person to person. What offends us depends on our social and economic background our religious views or lack of, the friendships you've had, how you were brought up, where you live, your political affiliation, your ethnicity, sexuality, age, gender, even your diet. And just because you are offended by a specific thing, it does not mean that the rest of the world should be. Because we are all unique and varied. And if we weren't, then wouldn't we all be exactly the same and have the same beliefs? And that doesn't sound like much fun, does it? My point is, where does it stop? I'm slightly offended by people who drink instant coffee, but am I going to protest against it? Or call the police? No, because me being offended doesn't matter. It gives me no rights, and it's not my place to tell others how to behave. At the end of the day, no one is being harmed, no crime has been committed. So why should I care? Everyone out there is offended by different things. You can guarantee that no matter what you think of, there will be someone out there in the world who finds it offensive. 
You can never fully police every thought. Freedom of speech and people's behaviours, because doing so would be trying to police everyone and everything that they say. The so-called snowflake generation are trying to police thought and free speech. And the totally ironic thing is that the vast majority of the millennial mind police would consider themselves to be very liberal, wouldn't you say? Now I don't know about you, but I would say that attempting to prevent people from thinking a certain way, from saying what they want and stopping them from behaving in a natural and human way, is the opposite of liberal. It's actually incredibly fascist. And to make matters worse, it's not just the public that are getting offended too easily. It's our government too. As was demonstrated with a very recent and shocking case in Scotland. Scottish comedian and YouTuber Mark Meacham posted a video on YouTube in which he lightheartedly explained that he is sick of his girlfriend thinking that absolutely everything her pet pug does is adorable and cute, and so he thought it would be funny to teach the pug to do the least cute and most horrific thing that he could think of, which is of course being a Nazi. So, Mark taught the pug behind his girlfriend's back that upon hearing the command, gas the Jews, the pug would raise his stubby little leg in what we would infer to be a Nazi salute. Now of course, the hilarious thing about this is that the adorable little pug has no idea what it is doing. It is completely deadpan. And that juxtaposition between the cute and the horrific makes for a really funny video. Is Mark Meachin supporting the views, ideologies and actions of the Nazis? No. Does making and posting this video online make him a neo-Nazi or supporter of anti-Semitism? Absolutely not. Because it was obviously intended as comedy and no more than that. And there categorically should be no rules when it comes to comedy. Sure. Some people may find this video insensitive, but I'm sorry, you either have to have free speech or nothing at all, especially when it comes to comedy. Because as soon as you start to draw lines between what is okay to make fun of and what isn't, you start policing people's thoughts and people's free speech. And that is just a slippery slope into a war on intelligence and rational thought. Two things that we must fight to defend, no matter the cost. After being posted on Reddit, Meachin's video went viral, gathering 3 million views. Subsequently, Meachin was arrested on suspicion of hate crime. In March 2018, he faced trial in court, in what was a very sad day for freedom of speech. Meachin was found guilty and sentenced to a fine of £800. £800 may not seem like a heavy sentence, but the very fact that there was a trial at all, and even worse, that a guilty verdict was reached, is a very sad precedent for democracy, free speech, and everything that makes being a human, being free, and being able to express ourselves so great and so precious. In the words of Mark Meachin himself, when you start jailing comedians for making jokes, you're heading down a slippery slope. And my God, he couldn't be more right. I'm not being overly dramatic when I say that this decision sets a very dangerous precedent that should make us all very worried about the future of free speech. The judge actually tried to put forward the ridiculously absurd case that Meachin's video was not intended as comedy, but was instead some kind of Nazi propaganda with a goal to unite the masses in the act of gassing Jews, and the cute pug was only a way to disguise his true evil and malicious intent. I'm not pulling your leg. That is what the court genuinely said. This is obviously a load of crap because it was unquestionably comedy. But one has to ask, by sentencing Meachin for making this comedy video, aren't the courts suppressing his free speech? Just like the Nazis did? Didn't we fight against the Nazis to preserve our ability to speak and act freely and avoid totalitarian oppression? So it begs the question, who is really exercising Nazi ideals here? The only thing that was 
refreshingly nice to see, was the overwhelming public support for Mark Meachin in defence of his ill treatment by the court. Many comedians also spoke out publicly defending Meachin's actions, namely Ricky Gervais, providing hope that rational thought and the desire for free speech are still well and alive within our society. Let's just hope we can keep it that way. So to finish up, I implore you, the next time that someone gets offended and complains at you for sitting the wrong way in public, for eating meat, for using gender pronouns, for openly supporting your favourite political party, for casually flirting with a stranger, for innocently touching another human being, for praying for your chosen deity, for earning more money than your peers, for making a simple joke, or simply because you don't identify as a non-conforming gender-fluid pansexual cabbage. Do not stand for it. Not for a moment. Because at the end of the day, you are only being yourself. And believe me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If simply being yourself and doing what you know and what comes natural to you offends someone else, then it's their problem to deal with it. Don't let them make it yours or anybody else's. Thanks for watching. If miraculously you enjoyed this video, then please click here to support me on Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.